Hi, my name is Marc Raupach and I'm going to present to you how to simulate the frequency-dependent dielectric function by means of linear response, time-dependent current density functional theory with the band program using the graphical user interface. As an example, I decided to simulate a molybdenum disulfide monolayer structure. Let's start off by calling ADF jobs, for example from the command line, and switch to a directory which is suited to do calculations in, and create a subdirectory by clicking on File and New Directory. Rename it to something like MOS2 monolayer, and change directory into MOS2 monolayer. Now we call the ADF and band input interface by clicking on the SCM logo and on new input. There is a rather convenient way to load structures which are already present in the graphical user interface structure library by clicking on the magnifying glass and typing what you're looking for. In our case it is MOS2 monolayer. Now we have loaded the structure, so the coordinates of the atoms and the lattice vectors. And we, we are going to change the calculation details in the main panel. For example, we set the relativity to scalar, the basis set to DZP, the numerical quality to basic. Since for response calculations one usually needs a rather dense K-mesh, we are going to set the case space by hand to 11 by 11. Now for the interface of the dielectric function. Click on properties and dielectric function. In the upper part you see that you can choose methods. You can choose the new and the old response method. But to simulate two-dimensional materials and their response properties you can only choose the new response. So let's choose the new response. This method is simulating explicit points in frequency space. So we have to tell the program how many frequency space uh, frequency points have to be simulated in a certain frequency range. Here we are simulating 21 frequencies in the range of 1 eV to 3 eV, which covers most of the visible range of spectroscopy. In the SCF section, you can change details regarding the SCF of the response, like the cycles, the mixing during the SCF, and the convergence criterion, which we are going to set to 0 0.1. In the technical section, you can change the values for eta, which influences the integration weight evaluation. You can change the volume cutoff, which changes the assumed volume of a one and two dimensional material and you can change the active energy space which we are going to set to 1 eV. Setting it to a small value like 1 eV will enhance the performance of the calculation since only these transitions are taken into account which have a smaller energy difference than 1, one eV plus the maximum defined energy range, in this case 3 eV. Since we are simulating a two-dimensional material and its response property, we are usually only interested in the x and y component, so we neglect the z component in this calculation. Now we are set to start the calculation by clicking on File and Run and we are giving it a suitable name like MOS2 TDCDFT. A warning will be prompted stating that the new response can only be performed for calculations using no symmetry, which is not a problem at all, it is just a warning. Now our, our calculation is already up and running and in the ADF jobs window you see the updated log file statements. By clicking there, another window will pop up showing the complete log file. Since this calculation will take some time, I want to set your focus on 
a very nice feature of the graphical user interface. You cannot just do calculations on your local machine, but you can also set up a queue, which is intended to send calculations to a remote cluster. This you can do by clicking on queue and in the option new, you see different options of presets for different queuing systems. And here we are going to show the PBS queuing system. In the PBS details, you see a couple of options you can set. For example, the name of the queue, the default options, which in this case will influence the time of your calculation on the cluster, then the remote host, which is the uh, address of your cluster, the remote user, which is your user account name on this cluster, the remote job directory, which handles in which directory the calculations are stored on cluster. The run command is a very important option since it handles how the job is started. In this case, it is a queue sub command which is starting a calculation on two nodes with each two processes using the InfiniBand internode connection. The next four commands, use local batch, kill command, job status and system status are not as relevant, so you can just keep the options which are given. The prolog command is again a rather important one. This will set all the environment variables necessary to do the calculation with band or with any other program of the SEM package. SEM provides you already with a suitable script to do so, which you can find in your ADF home directory. Let me type it in, for example, it might be in dollar home, ADF repo, ADF 2017.104 slash ADF bash RC dot SH. Doing so, we have given all the information necessary to perform a remote job. You can also define a epilogue command, which will handle, for example, all the calculation details and files and directory which are left after the calculation finished and what will happen to them. So now you can save it and you can choose to change your queuing system by choosing a job, clicking on queue and clicking on the newly generated PBS queue. If you intend to use the PBS queue as a default, so for all calculations you are starting, you can set it to default via set default and clicking on PBS. In the meantime, the simulation of the frequency dependent dielectric function for MOS2 monolayer finished and we can investigate the calculated property with the ADF Spectra program by clicking on SEM and Spectra. This will automatically prompt the dielectric function for the X component of the simulated material. Here you see in red the real part of the function and in blue the imaginary part of the function. This is it for today. Thank you for watching and goodbye.